Okay, welcome back to Acts chapter 12 as we're reading about the Great Escape. This was a, a real uh, Houdini um, a miracle, uh, better than a Houdini, it was a miracle because a, 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 and angels intervened and, and helped Peter to escape from prison and, and the notice of 16 guards who were around him. And we left off last time in Acts chapter 12 and verse number 7. The chains fell right off Peter's hands. And so, you know, the next day when they discover he's gone, the chains are still going to be there. Verse number 8, And the angel said to him, Gird yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and continued to follow. He did not know that what was being done by the angel was real, uh, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and the second guard, I guess they were frozen, they came to the iron gate that leads into the city, which opened for them by itself. And they went out and went along one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. When Peter came to himself, he said, Now I know for sure that the Lord has sent forth his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. Great. God's got a great prison ministry. And when he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, who was also called Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. And again, this is, you know, I think we, it's implied they were praying for Peter, because we had read earlier, remember in this chapter, that you know, prayer was being made fervently for Peter once he was incarcerated. When he knocked at the door of the gate, a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer. And when she recognized Peter's voice because of her joy, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter was standing in front of the gate. They said to her, you are out of your mind. And I always just like to put in there, parenthetically, God wouldn't have answered our prayers, would he? <laughs> uh, but she kept insisting that it was so. They kept saying, it is his angel. So, you know, there's this back and forth going between Rhoda and the and the and the prayers and their prayers have been answered and she's telling them that and they don't believe it and why they kept saying it is his angel uh, I don't know some doctrine has been built upon that uh, it's just a little piece of evidence that I wouldn't want to build too much doctrine on that everybody has an angel every one of God's people has their own personal angel that might be true the word in the Greek agelos uh, can be translated messenger that's what an angel angel actually means messenger and so perhaps they weren't saying it was his spirit angel you know that everybody has a guardian angel why would they say that you think about that why would they say it's not Peter it's his angel and, and so don't bother us you know, when they say, it's his angel, let's go see his angel, right? You know, they all rush out there to uh, get a glance at Peter's angel. They wouldn't be sloughing off Rhoda and saying, Rhoda, just don't worry about it. That's his angel out there. And we're not interested. We're going to keep praying. No. So they're, they're saying somebody, somebody that Peter has sent as a messenger, but it couldn't possibly be Peter himself. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door, they saw him and were amazed, but motioning to them with his hand to be silent. Because, you know, you can imagine the uproar. He described to them how the Lord had led him out of the prison, and he said, report these things to James, not the James who had just had his head cut off because of Herod, a different James. There's about three, or at least, at least three different James, as I'm aware of. James the greater, James the lesser, James the just. Report these things to James and the brethren. Then he left and went to another place. Hmm. So there you have it. It's a great story, you know, and we could ask the question, why did God deliver Peter and not deliver James? As we're told, you know, James was martyred at the beginning of this chapter. Uh, and I don't know. Who knows the answer to that? You know, that's in one of the mysteries that God has kept to himself. But I've always thought to myself, maybe we shouldn't ask that question. Maybe we should be asking, why did God allow James to leave this lousy earth and get to the ultimate destination of heaven and uh, sadly, tragically, keep Peter stuck on this lousy earth? <laughs> you know, you get a different perspective uh, when you look at it from heaven's perspective. So it really wasn't all that sad. James, of course, great loss for the church. Peter would have been a great loss for the church as well. But God has no shortage of people that he can raise up and anoint and so forth. Okay? 
Well, when day came, now when day came, there was no small disturbance among the soldiers as to what could have become of Peter. Wow. And I would love to think that a couple of those soldiers, especially the ones that were right there beside him uh, during the night and ones guarding the door uh, and so forth, would have pondered what happened enough to realize this is a miracle. God has delivered his, his man and they would have investigated uh, what this man had to say and maybe given their lives to Jesus as a result. It's certainly within the realm of possibility. Abilities. When Herod had searched for him and had not found him, he examined the guards and ordered they be led away. And then in, in the New American Standard has in italics, to execution. That wasn't in the original scripture, but it's implied, and that's why the uh, translators add that. And, well, you know, that is tragic. These guys were completely innocent. Uh, they were doing their jobs, but uh, they're no match for God. You know, but again, the, the, the miracle that they all you know, had a first-hand experience with, and now knowing that, that they're going to die uh, is a great combination for people to ponder about uh, life after death and are, am I ready to die and stand before God. When you think about it, it's a wonderful blessing to know that you're going to die. I mean, when people uh, die suddenly, unexpectedly, man, they don't have time to think. But people who are given a death sentence, like these guys were, or contract some slow disease that they can begin to ponder as they slowly get worse, that is a blessing if that's what gives them more time to seek the Lord and get right before him because it's never too late until our last breath, right? The thief on the cross story shows that, okay? And so led away at execution, then he went down from Judea to Caesarea and was spending some time there. And so, um, We'll stop here for now because the story continues to talk about what happens to Herod. It's a cool story, a cool chapter we've had. Can't wait to get together with you next time and see the real end of this story. What a reversal of fortunes we're going to see. I'll see you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.